This is a reading of Out of the Dust, Autumn, 1935, Part 2. Not everywhere. I walk with Daddy up the slope and look out over the Beaver River. Louise is back at the house. She wants to come. But this is Ma's place, Ma's grave, Franklin's too. And Louise has no business here. She wants to come everywhere with us. Well, I won't let her. Not everywhere. Daddy says she could have come. There's room enough for everyone, Billy Joe. But there's not. She can come into Ma's kitchen. She can hang around the barn. She can sit beside daddy when he drives the truck. But Ma's bones are in this hill, Ma's and Franklin's. And their bones wouldn't like it if Louise came walking up here between us. October 1935. <clears throat> My life, or what I told Louise, after the 10th time she came to dinner. I may look like daddy, but I have my mother's hands, piano hands, Ma called them, sneaking a look at them any chance she got. A piano is a grand thing, I say. Though ours is covered in dust now, under the grime, it's dark brown like my mother's eyes. I think about the piano and how it hangs and how above it hangs a mirror and to either side of that mirror shelves where Ma and Daddy's wedding picture once stood, though Daddy has taken that down. Wherever she could, Ma filled a bowl with apples, I tell Louise. I'm crazy about apples. And she filled a jar with wildflowers when she found them and put them on that shelf above the piano. On the other shelf, Ma's book of poetry remains and the invitation from Aunt Ellis or what's left of it. Daddy and I tore it into strips to mark the poems we thought Ma liked best. We weren't always happy, I tell Louise, but we were happy enough until the accident. When I rode the train west, I went looking for something, but I didn't see anything wonderful. I didn't see anything better than what I already had, home. I look straight into Louise's face. Louise doesn't flinch. She looks straight back. I am the first one to back down. My hands don't look really pretty anymore, but they hardly hurt. They only ache a little sometimes. I could play right now, maybe, if I could get the dust out of the piano. If I wanted to get the dust out of the piano, but I don't, I'm not ready yet. And what I like best about her is, Lou, is Louise doesn't say what I should do. She just nods. And I know she's heard everything I said and some things I didn't say too. November, 1935. November dust. The weed is growing even though dust blows in sometimes. I walk with daddy around the farm and see that the pond is holding its own. It will keep Ma's apple trees alive, nourish her garden, help the grass around it grow enough to lie in and dream if I feel like it. And stand in and wait for Mad Dog when he comes past once a week on his way home from Amarillo where he works for the radio. And as long as the dust doesn't crush the winter wheat, we'll have something to show in the spring for all daddy's hard work. Not a lot, but more than last year.
November 1935. Thanksgiving List. Prairie birds, the whistle of gophers, the wind, blowing, the smell of grass and spicy earth, friends like Mad Dog, the cattle down in the river, water washing over their hooves, the sky so big, so full of shifting clouds, the cloud sh shadows creeping over the fields, daddy's smile and his laugh and his songs, Louise, food without dust. Daddy sing to Ma's piano, newly cleaned and tuned. The days when my hands don't hurt at all. The thank you note from Lucille in Moline, Kansas. The sound of rain. Daddy's hole staying full of water. As the windmill turns, the smell of green, of damp earth of hope returning to our farm. The poppy set to bloom on Ma and Frank's grave. The morning with the whole day waiting, full of promise. The night of quiet, of no expectations of rest. And the certainty of home, the one I live in, and the one that lives in me. November 1935.